to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. your voice will be clear speak to us O king of zion and cause our ears to hear that which the spirit wants us to hear we pray that you will reveal the mind of the father to us and i pray that we will rise we will rise we will rise in the name of jesus we declare that our spirits are receptive there is the hearing of faith and the working of miracles and Lord, we thank you because burdens are lifted in this atmosphere. The sick are healed, the oppressed are delivered. You will give direction and hope. And Lord, every prophetic word needed to change every life and every situation, it will come expressly by your word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 12, keep standing. Please keep standing. First Chronicles chapter 12 and I want us to read verse 32. I wish we can have this projected. First Chronicles chapter 12. It's a privilege to stand and minister God's word. It's a privilege to bring to us understanding. Are we there? It's projected. I just want us to read the A part. Are we together? Can we read? One to read. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. There is a relationship between understanding and the quality of your action. He says they had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. Not just that they acted, but they knew what to do. We're here tonight gathered so that God will grant us the keys that will help us know what to do. Many people are acting, 
just taking actions that are not producing results it's one thing to act but it's another thing to know what to do he says the children of Issachar they had an understanding of the times then they knew what Israel had to do light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like your candle light me Lord light me Lord it's a prayer not a song it's a prayer not a song light me Lord light me Lord like menorah Light my life, light me, Lord. Let me know what to do. Pray, pray, pray from the depth of your heart. Let your light swallow up my darkness. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. The Bible says, they that stumble, stumble in the night. There is, there is no way you will stumble once there is light. Are we together now? Yeah. The Bible says, the eye is the light of the body. It says, and if your eye be full of light, right? If your eye be full of light, then, paraphrasing now, it lightens your path. But then if your eyes be darkness, there are too many people stumbling. Stumbling. I don't just want to start preaching. It's important to know that our hearts are prepared to receive. You see, this song that we just sang right now is not, it's not a special number to just make you feel emotional. I tell you, it's one of the greatest cry you can pray in this season. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. But the Holy Spirit is the light upon the candle. A candle is useless notice the way the candle lights it keeps burning the wax and then the light keeps coming so the treasure in that candle is hidden inside are we together now without a fire there cannot be light the greater the burning of the outer sphere of that candle the more it gives illumination so i want you to sing this song with understanding father there are i i confess ignorance in my life but light me are you ready to sing it from your heart? Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Give us illumination tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Just turn to your left and right. Generously greet someone. Night me, Lord. Hallelujah. One of the blessings of walking with the Holy Spirit is the capacity to develop your discernment. Discernment is the spiritual quality of perception. It's the ability to perceive not just the origin of things, the spirit that engineers certain things, but also a perception of thoughts and a perception of intentions. With... Uh, discernment works almost like mind reading you are able to pick signals are we together now 
That's why I led us to read that scripture. It says the sons of Issachar had an understanding, a perception of the times. One of the secrets, listen, one of the secrets to a life of victory is the ability to move as the spirit is moving. In the revelation of Ezekiel, and Daniel had the same revelation. It says how that the cherubs, everywhere the spirit moved, they also moved. The secret to a life of victory, the secret to a life of triumph, is to do what God is doing. Is to go where God is going. Because anywhere God is, that is where his life, his power, his victory, his glory is concentrated. If God is going to the left and you are headed right, you are in trouble. If God is going right and you are headed left, you are in trouble. It's important. That's why we pray. And that's why we create an atmosphere of worship. Because among other things, we want to build discernment. The capacity to understand the speakings of the Spirit for every season. Hallelujah. And um, God has been helping us. We've been bringing teachings already that I believe are very, very applicable to our lives. And in line with the word that God has given us this year. Tonight, I want to share on something powerful. This message is very personal to me, especially in this season. Because I have seen the... Let me borrow from the words of God's servant, Bishop David Oyedepo. I have seen the capacity for sweatless triumph on the strength of what I'm about to share with you. But then I have seen how difficult the life of a man can be if you do not have this. Let me digress for a minute or two to reiterate something that I believe has been an anthem in this place. It's important to know what spiritual growth is because that's why we are gathered here spiritual growth first and foremost is the ability to conform experientially to the image of the Christ conformity conformity to the image of the Christ the second character of spiritual growth is the ability to sustain an ability where you accurately comprehend the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom so i can know whether or not you are growing spiritually by seeing to what degree you are conforming to the image of the christ one and then the second point is i want to see how you are living your life i want to see how you interplay spiritual laws like a chef in a kitchen with raw ingredients but can give you an assurance to be patient for two hours and within those times he or she is working out something mixing the ingredients with intelligence and knowledge and after two hours sometimes what he or she is mixing will even change color they they know what to do and then they bring out a beautiful combination and it blesses everyone you are not a blessing if you do not understand the secrets of the kingdom you cannot be a blessing men rise in this kingdom through secrets we rise in this kingdom through secrets our business in this kingdom is the ability to trade secrets the secrets of the kingdom no matter how you brag about being spiritual if you do not know how to handle the secrets of the kingdom to produce the results that are required you are wasting your time and you will eventually get frustrated no matter how confident you sound now and what a joy to have a ministry and a platform by his grace that can afford us the opportunity to rise to a point where we understand the secrets of the kingdom this is what we teach every time and tonight you're about to learn one i pray that you not only add it to the list of the mysteries you may have had and are not using but that you pay attention to it because it may be the one key that is required in this season 
to bring prophecy to manifestation hallelujah can you pray for one minute and say lord open my eyes open my eyes open my ears Tonight I'm teaching on what I title the gift of men. The gift of men. Ephesians chapter 4. The gift of men. I want to share with you and unlock to you a mystery behind strange breakthroughs. The mystery of or a mystery really not just a mystery but one of the kingdom secrets that controls what i will call a quantum leap in a man's life hallelujah i want to share with you a mystery that is responsible for the sudden explosion in the life and destinies of individuals businesses ministries and all of that please pay attention the gift of men Ephesians chapter 4 your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your I will forever sing your name. I will sing. I will sing. Of the wonders of your world. I will sing. Out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your world, and I will forever sing your praise. Seven and eight, Ephesians four, seven and eight. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and did what? Gave gifts unto men. Those gifts are not talents. Those gifts are not the gifts of the spirit. Those gifts are people. When he ascended up on high, he gave men to men. There are men called gifts. Are we together? The gift here is not anointing. The gift here is not talent like word of knowledge. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. When you read all through the context of Ephesians 4, you never see the mention of anything anointing or gifts of the spirit. Uh-uh. He gave gifts unto men. Where is your own? Because the Bible says he gave gifts unto men. And he says anyone who has that gift will come into a level, a stature, he calls it. Are we together? He gave gifts unto men. Fast forward all the other verses. He says to the end, because of those gifts, that we come into the fullness of the measure of the expectation, the stature of Christ. Meaning, there is a gift I must receive. There is a dimension of the operation of the Spirit I must receive in men to be able to rise to that level. Please pay attention. Everything on earth today happens because of one single entity called man. The wars in the world today 
happen because of man the peace experienced by nature by nations have been brokered by men listen to me the poverty that we experience in africa and other parts of the world have been caused and have been sustained by men the wealth and abundance that have been experienced in our world today have been engineered by men the economic system that our civilization currently runs on was designed and is sustained by men the policies that govern the progress or the slavery of individuals and territories were carefully decided upon and prepared by men the only reason why there are still human beings on earth is because there are still men the reason why there is hatred in the world is not because there are animals it's because there are men the only reason why every other thing works you say i'm a real estate mogul no land does not give anybody money people love the land so the land becomes expensive everything revolves around men please pay attention i want to share with you a powerful mystery koinonia is running today not because jesus is lord but because there are men. the radio station thrives because at the other end of the broadcast there is a human ear not an animal ear not a monkey or a dog ear a human ear to listen there is an armed robber planning to rob today and his mission looks realistic because of the existence of men how come the entire civilization of mankind run in, yet we never study them we study clothes we study oil we study every other thing but we never pay attention to men let me show you a wise man who did what we should be doing psalms 8 hello madonna psalms 8 hello madonna David was called up a man after God's heart. Listen, it was not just Solomon alone that was wise. David was very wise. He said, Oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Listen, who has set thy glory above the heavens? Read on, please. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength because of thy enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Three when i consider the heavens the work of thy fingers the moon think about it which thou hast ordained for what is man that thou art mindful you took your time to create everything for him you created the sun the moon you put protection you made sure plants produced so god there is what is man what was in your mind when you were designing this entity called man that even you god will not rest why that is all god thinks about in heaven do you know god does not think about his glory i know what he's thinking about now man think about it sister if you are aware brother has been thinking about you from morning till night i think it's a cause to smile that shows you are valuable what is man that thou art it didn't say brain full mindful your mind is full right what's that song he will not suffer my food to be moved carry your presence everywhere who am i your mind is so full of me Lord, man, awesome oh, God. so what is mine he never say who is man 
it's not talking about the personality of man what strategy did you design that you called man i know his personality but lord what is the use of the could you not replace him with something listen read the bible god has replaced many things with many things but god has been unable to find a replacement for man to an extent that no matter how bad man was god will come and say we will fix it even the man himself after helping them he still preserved others there must be more in this mystery called man you know what is in a bank that's why they protect it you know what is in the earth that's why we put nmpc to guard it but we do not know what is in this entity called man what is man i put it in a better way what is in man that thou art mindful of him can't you just waste them away and build another species lord are you are you so dull after you created man did you lose your sense of creativity why do you want to so fix him why can't you just replace him can't you put a mind in chairs what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that as glorious as heaven is you are not comfortable so you come to visit him to an extent that you make that man your temple that man your temple your temple it's like donald trump coming to live somewhere at the back of this place and he says believe me you cannot get the joy and he said no 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 i mean you have everything you need Let's sing that song again. God, we are, we are, we are flying this night. He will not suffer my foot to him. I carry a present everywhere. Who am I? You can be so to me. What have you done with Jimmy, Moses had died when Archangel Michael came to carry his body. Lucifer also came wanting the body. The guy had died, they were fighting over the body. What was in the body? Don't just say it's your spirit alone that is important. Listen to me. What is in this body? that jesus is interested in satan is interested why do demons look for human bodies what in a body L listen listen what what happens to them when they are in a body you must understand this i will show you a mystery that will change your life we look for oil and ignore men we protect oil wells and leave men think how foolish we are we put fence around lands but leave men and ignore them and kill them and burn them and we want to move forward the psalmist said i have already considered the ground i consider the oil fields <clears throat> i consider the sun i consider uh -uh. i i found out your attention is on this entity so god please tell me what is man that you are mindful of him if i have a safe with a million dollars and i'm hiding it if you touch any other thing i won't say anything but if you are coming here there i'll be shifting back that's how it is satan noticed every other thing he touched god didn't bother but the moment he started coming to man his attention batters that man and then jesus himself came and walked upon the earth they asked jesus why did you come he said to die what kind of assignment is that went to the cross and the people he was dying for were not even repentant yet he was not angry there is more to me and you i will show you something today that will make you never hate any human being i will show you something today that will make you see that your prosperity is in the hands of man what is man the most abundant secret to our blessing moves around us every day 
yet we we can trade it a thousand times to look for oil we can trade it a thousand times to look for whatever it is we protect things more than men we would rather kill men than kill things if 100,000 people die listen and Nigeria's oil field is protected we think we're still all right listen I want you to think about this for a moment just imagine that everyone at the same time in the world falls into a state of coma except you listen do we have intelligent minds in this place imagine that not death everybody simultaneously 7.2 billion people enter a state of coma right now except you let me tell you what will happen to you i know you will first run to the bank you will find it open by the way you will enter the safe and run to a mall no security no nothing no plane no more terrorists no fear where are the demons they are no longer interested you search for them every dark corner does not make you afraid again so why did it make me afraid man man the only reason why demons have something to do is because man is still alive so brothers and sisters i want to ask you again what is in man don't you think this calls for study this thing changed my life i'm playing with your expectation before i begin to teach you what is man when i consider the work of your hands when you see a man designing something you want to know what he wants to put there when i see you building a house i want to know the kind of thing you want to put there then you finish building a beautiful house lavish money and carry a little gold or a little baby or a dog and put in the house i know that that is a dog plus something maybe that dog you are hiding cocaine in that dog i will tear that dog and find out why are we together now jesus shed his blood many times men will cry even for themselves to die listen listen have you tried to fix things fix things and it didn't work what do you do you try to fix a gas cooker again and again it doesn't work god doesn't throw it away now it's a mystery i wish i had time i would have shown you something a prophet saw that just like a shepherd comes to rescue a lamb he gave us an analogy in the book of Hosea. I think it was Amos. Amos now. Right? That a, a lion ate a lamb, ate everything. He only left two legs and one ear. Two legs and one ear. Yet the shepherd fought the lion and recovered the two ear, the two legs and one ear. When I read that scripture, I said, ah, if you come and you see a lion devouring your sheep, and the intestines have been eaten only one ear and two legs is it worth fighting for and yet the shepherd fought i preached a message years ago with that because for as long as you can have ears to hear the creative word of the lord and two legs to take a step of faith you can get everything back again it's the mystery of restoration the most important part of that sheep the lion did eat it what a foolish lion it ate every other part and left what can bring it back the lion would have eaten the ears and the legs and gone away and you would have finished that animal because if you still can hear and you can take steps of faith then all hope is not lost let's go to our discussion tonight please sit down everything on earth i said happens because of man the demonic oppression happens because of man there are more angelic activities on earth right now than human activities all because of men if god were to open your eyes in the realm of the spirit you will see myriads of angels dispatched and sent because of man every business succeeds because there is a man to provide that value and there is a man to patronize it is that true those of you who do businesses on campus you know that holidays are very bad times for you you don't like it why not because the building moves are we together now 
to an extent Ejimi, that you can ship a consultant from India bundle him like a package and bring him to a hospital just to perform an eight hour surgery and go back and pay him millions yet you think he is worth it hallelujah what is man that thou art mindful of him I have spent my life studying and learning the mysteries of the kingdom that control the results that we desire I still am at it and I do it passionately I'm like a spiritual archaeologist if you would um, permit me to use that word because I strongly believe the few the secret of the future is in the past there is something we have long forgotten about that holds the key to a glorious future and so I study a lot and when the Lord began to teach me the mystery of men um, I just felt it was very important to teach us now when you consider the personalities of men listen you're talking about the psychological implication of men you can have people who we consider to be extroverts people who we consider to be introverts and etc that's not what i'm talking about today i'm not talking about the physiology of men i'm not talking about the psychology of men i'm talking about the spirituality the very spirituality the spiritual significance of having a gift called a man in your life notice every time there is the coming of a man into another person's life the bible calls it an advantage when he created all things when he made the woman remember he said it is not good so another body comes into another life and the bible says that person's life should not be the same I, i'm just using marriage as an analogy he said he that finds a wife he never said he that finds oil he never said he that goes to school has done a good thing he never said he that, he that if you can find another human being then he said there is a friend another human being that sticks close ah, ah. he gave gifts to men the bible was speaking about the patriarch abraham and he said abraham set out on his journey as instructed by god and then lot went with him he never said lord helped him lord just followed another man and lord's life started changing are you hearing what i'm saying now let me show you the implication of men the bible records that there was a man called laban laban and then jacob came to the house of laban and over a span of about 10 years laban's entire life changed is that true the bible speaks about a prophet called jonah on his way to run away from god's instruction entered a boat where there were other men and certain strange things started happening every time someone died they started calling for the appearance of a man and a man appeared and then something happened have you noticed every time men entered an atmosphere they, they made certain things to happen men men when Gehazi was troubled he went to meet a man are men really important when they were hungry 5,000 people they found a loaf five loaf two fish from a man and took it to meet a man even when the donkey spoke he spoke to a man please i want you to pay attention because what i'm saying will bless your life forever that means if i ignore men i am ignoring something more than a personality i am driving out a realm of reality and possibility from my life listen listen if i ignore men in fact in ancient times when kings had men they were called wealthy 
not just because they had an arsenal of people to fight because sometimes the people were not skilled but in the multitude of men is a king's honor the multitude of men is a king's honor every religion fights for men kings of the earth fight for men the only reason why they fight for territory is so that it can accommodate more men are we together when a man meets with his wife they give birth to another man why is god interested in another man when satan tries to afflict a woman with barrenness what is he trying to stop what is he trying to stop he's not trying to stop joy no he's not trying to stop peace there are people who are happy without children why will satan take the issue of men personal when moses was giving birth to mm, listen moses was giving birth to a decree listen they said they should kill all not animals men in this case the masculine uh, gender but then men when jesus was born the same thing happened again kill men what is in man oh god that you are mindful of what am i missing the last person i drove away from my life what did i drive away i'm about to show you why is it that the bible even says a born again spirit filled man for treating another man in his life called his wife the heavens will close over him and his prayer will not be answered i didn't steal i didn't kill i only did something to another man that was not good yet heaven responds to it this entity called man brothers and sisters has more than just a personality if all you look at is just two eyes two legs and a personality you will cheat yourself listen 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 let me tell you certain things about men number one men in themselves are not perfect ignore this because what i'm about to show you will be stopped when you are when you don't take away the, you know the, the the effect of some of these things i'm sharing men are not perfect in themselves you may meet foolish men in your life you may meet all wise men in your life however it still is not in enough reason to just throw them away they may be holding certain things that i'll be revealing to you shortly are we together for some reason god hid his possibilities in men he didn't hide it just in buildings he didn't just hide it in territories but the consecration of the possibilities of men he hid it the possibilities of god he hid it in men he made man the highest of his creation men are not perfect in themselves Number two, the attitude and the behavior of men, good or bad, good or bad, listen to me, does not stop your receiving what they carry. The attitude of men, good or bad, does not stop your receiving what they carry. Elijah was an angry man, yet he was used to change the life and the stories of people you have to listen to this let me say the third thing that i'd want to say about men are you ready for this there are certain possibilities in men listen to me that predates even their salvation experience please listen predate their salvation experience that can still be received whether they are born again or not you have to understand what i'm telling you now am i just am i saying people should remain unbelievers no but i am saying there are certain things that god has put in men 
that can be received whether or not those people are born again or not if an old woman causes you whether as a witch or as a human being the fact that she has lived long enough certain possibilities have been open to her to be able to speak over your life are you getting what i'm saying now yeah all through scripture every time children cried god had children every time read your bible every time children cried there was a response from the earth to heaven that's why i say out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou had ordained are we together your destiny and my destiny are men dependent write this down it's a very serious point the your destiny and my destiny the fulfillment of it is highly men dependent my prosperity is men dependent the quality of the work god has given me the quality of your church your ministry your life is men dependent the quality of your life on earth as a believer and as an inhabitant of the earth is men dependent your success and my success in life are highly or is highly men dependent evil on earth is men dependent the advancement of the kingdom on earth is men dependent the fulfillment of prophecy on earth is men dependent god can speak the bible never told us in the prophecy he said a virgin shall conceive a woman aligned herself with that prophecy otherwise jesus would never have been born he never said mary no a woman chose to play that script it just so happened that the name of that woman is mary it was said he would be buried in a virgin tomb he didn't tell us the owner that was somebody's business that was his property it so happened that the man who fulfilled that prophecy was joseph of arimathea he said how that he would be betrayed but he never said by a man called judas the prophetic word of god listen has been hanging over the heads of many people because the men to make it happen are not available or they have come and we have driven them away please pay attention occultism thrives through the availability of men when the devil wants to destroy a family there usually will be an envoy an individual an entity whatever it is men are more powerful than mediums you can keep a charm in a house but the most powerful charm is an aligned human being who has agreed and said satan i donate myself to scatter the life of these families are we together My assignment is tonight is to help us to open our eyes to the mystery of these gifts that God has given us that we throw away from our lives around called men and watch the unlimited possibilities I call it a quantum leap that your life there is a, a quantum leap is a jump not just a movement you move from one phase of possibility to the other because of the presence of a man hallelujah there are four implications of the presence of men in your life 
and I want you to note this. Number one, the first implication of a man coming into your life, especially sent by God, is the coming of wisdom, ideas, and strategies. The only entity that is able to convey wisdom, ideas, and strategies is man. Every time a man shows up in your life, wisdom, ideas, strategies, wisdom. So when I drive a man away, I did not just drive a personality. That's why I said, dot not wisdom cry. It personifies wisdom because wisdom moves in and through men. Are we together now? The conveyors of strategies and ideas and wisdom amen every time you are ready to move in a, to another dimension god sends a man and if you have the discernment that man can represent the strategy for the next level that man can represent the wisdom for the next level that man can introduce the idea for the next level many pastors many businesses many individuals are grounded because they think men are just black entities in clothes no every time you see a man coming to you in your state of misery begin to rejoice and begin to discern what is this man what is coming to me it's not just a human being with a mouth to speak are we together when you order a product from conga or jumia they have their pack is that true no matter where you buy it, they rewrap it with their own pack and every time you see it sometimes it could be a surprise when you see it you start laughing because you wonder what is inside whether it is big or small you want to see what is inside the next time you see a human being come to you especially sent by god in a prophetic season you must begin to rejoice because that person ignore the personality this is what i'm teaching you when you look at the personalities of men you will drive all your miracles out of your life there are times you have to ignore those personalities and discern i've been fasting three days lord what is the key to the next level then a man comes men are the vehicles that god uses to transport wisdom and strategies wisdom and strategies implication number one pay attention to what i'm teaching you wisdom strategies let me tell you i think shortly before koinonia would start when we we're still meeting that time at the back of chapel in the abu campus here one night the lord led me to do something i just told everyone we're not so many maybe three four hundred or so then and I told everyone please can you write don't write your name just write out whatever suggestion that you think can make this ministry rise to the next level that's your assignment just write it and drop it in the basket brothers and sisters my life changed koinonia entered another a quantum leap when i began to read some of the things that were written i was shocked man bringing with them strategies do you know the answer to your prayer is not far from you you just don't have the eyes to see let me tell you god is not wicked i have learned by experience that every answer is closer than you think it is shrouded in a man the secret to your financial hardship somebody is walking with the answer and he will walk and pass you walk and pass you walk and pass you even be encouraging you while you are crying but because you have not discerned that men are the conveyors of strategies men are the conveyors of ideas men are the conveyors of wisdom i've had people help me solve problems in life and i've been surprised not at the solution they brought but that they are the ones who brought it and I start saying, I mean, so why did I start going around? I mean, you were here all the while. Has that happened to you? After going around, looking for answers, talking everything, it is your roommate while you are discussing in the night. You say, have you tried A, B, C? And that's the end of it. 
men convey us solutions disguised in human beings that we push away and never rise to the top every time you pray and you see men coming into your life pay attention they may be men who have annoyed you every day of your life but on that day they are sent on that day they are sent who gave naaman the secret of his health I know we clapped for Elisha, but it was not Elisha. The Bible says there was a little slave girl, correct? A slave girl meant that she did not even have the rudiments, the education, and the training. Yet, listen, it was her that told Naaman, he said, I, I, I know I'm a slave, but there is a man of God. There is a man of God I want you to meet. When he met the man and, you know, doing his big manism, she, she's the one who came and advised him and said, see, he didn't ask you to go and bath in another dirty water somewhere. And Naaman washed seven times. And the Bible says his skin. Could it be that since 2013 you would have risen? But God kept answering your prayer and you kept rejecting the answer. God, give me strategies. And all of a sudden, he said, Please get out this way. We are talking serious things here. Said, I had a little dream. I saw you. I just wanted to share. Shut up! Don't tell me anything. I'm not stupid. I'm, I'm spiritual. A small girl like you. And you threw away your answer. The person, only humans can dream. Dogs don't dream. Forget all that junk you hear from sciences. Only humans have the faculty and the capacity to dream. A dream is a mystery. It's one of the access points where we receive revelation from the realm of the spirit. Only men can dream. Only God knows how many times you have dreamt the answer to someone's prayer. Yet the person drove you away. I'm not talking of false prophecies and, and nonsense where you keep harassing everybody. You keep seeing things about everybody's life, not your own life. I'm talking of quality, God-inspired solution that has a track record of results that we all appreciate. Are we together? Men. Number two. What is the implication of a man in your life? Endorsements and opportunities. Men are the conveyors of endorsements and opportunities. Listen, if no man can endorse you in this life, you will never rise. Paul, the apostle, a man approved, endorsed, when they produce a drug, they say this drug has been endorsed by the Nigerian Dental Society. Brush with it and your life will never be the same or whatever it is that, that is the advert. Are we together now? The endorsement. Whenever you are in doubt, when you see that endorsement, listen, we trivialize endorsement. Companies have entered million dollar status overnight because of endorsement. People have gotten admission with whatever it is because of endorsement. I was talking with one of our people here who had been trusting God, I think for a change of faculty or something. And, um, you know, the guy was discouraged. And then I told him, I said he should meet our daddy prof, you know, just to help him out. And he said, he, I saw him, I think it was just last week or so. And he was telling me, he said, everything is settled though. He said in his presence, they were driving everybody out. But immediately he entered and they saw the signature. They said, come in. Is it prof? Come in. It's called what? Many carnal people think it's not spiritual. You need endorsement. It was John the Baptist. Listen, this is a secret many rising ministers don't know. Somebody who earns the loyalty of the people must speak for you. Otherwise, the gate will not open. The gate will not open. Show me the man speaking for you. Show me who has authorized. Listen, when a man endorses you, he takes his sacrifice and puts it for you to cross with many believers lack endorsement many businesses lack endorsement many individuals lack endorsement there are many people who 
would have gotten jobs if only someone can say this and that and that by the privilege of god's grace that he has granted me i have endorsed people with just a statement a one minute phone call turn them to millionaires one minute phone call oh i know this person i can vouch for him help him benny Hinn was at almost at a state of financial bankruptcy one time they were going to cancel the crusade because he did not have enough money he needed 10 million dollars in three days 10 million dollars in three days an anointed man like benny Hinn, please pay attention benny Hinn was you know making a program challenging the partners to come and you know when the accounts department their back office were looking nobody was really contributing and the holy spirit told him to go and bring oral roberts he carried oral robert and brought him the old man came and sat on air and they had only three minutes can you imagine three minutes to the end of the program do you know what oral robert said he said benny is in need please help him in less than 24 hours they raised about 15 million dollars everybody say endorsement don't joke with what i'm telling you i'm teaching you a powerful mystery that you will need promotion many tongue talkers sit down everywhere because they do not do you know why i'm teaching you this i'm going to tell you the responsibility so that when you see a man that can endorse you no sacrifice to maintain the relationship becomes too much because you understand the implication of that person's reputation to your destiny all this unnecessary anger with everybody because you think you are the god of yourself you will stay poor and broke and you will lose in life endorsement 90 percent of the ministrations that i have gone to by the grace of god have happened through endorsements one pastor endorsing this someone saying i came for koinonia listen to this message while they are saying that i'm probably sleeping or gisting with somebody i pray for someone tonight in the name of jesus christ the voice the voice no, any listen not every voice can lift you not every voice can lift you the voice that has been accredited is the voice that can lift you and i pray for you in the name of jesus the son of the living god may that voice speak over your life yeah. hallelujah men imply the presence of endorsements and opportunities pastor alpha called me i think when was it that yesterday i was in abuja and he called me and he said apostle do you know anybody who read civil engineering there is a job right now as we are talking for the person no interview no nothing and all he wanted was who is who is there I mean so that we can give him the, I said Kai I don't know anybody in my mind let's come for koinonia after maybe the person is here now as you are here you are saying praise the Lord and I help you answer hallelujah because that's it it's done someone's life changed overnight how many people after service they were just going out to trek just like that and somebody gave them a lift and while discussing they say, ah, what do you do young man say sir you know, I'm just moving around. Say, ah, well, how can you be moving around? What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Come to my office. Take this card. And they thought maybe the office looks like just a small fish pond and another building. And they enter the office and they say, sorry, this person. And it, it keeps getting access until he gets to the man and he says, well, I'm the managing director of ABC. I'm the Nigerian representative of this. Let your life change. Can men change people's lives? <laughs> you, are, you are a big joke. Look, let me tell you. Some things are not demonic oppression. Some things are childishness, which have been caused by lack of orientation. Sometimes we need sufficient adults to tell us how some things work. You know, all this childishness people carry around. I don't need anybody. You need, oh. You better change that talk quick. I don't need any man. Are you joking? Man, what is man? that thou art mindful of man is a conveyor of endorsement and opportunity are we together that's why we work at making every service 
a great experience for everyone because everyone's experience is automatically an endorsement of what we represent I have gotten things without paying for them because of endorsements brothers and sisters I'm showing you a simple secret that will change your life forever the Bible says they know not neither will they understand they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course people have received partnership in their ministry overnight because of an endorsement i've had the privilege i remember one time a particular pastor somewhere you know i, I don't raise money raise funds and all of that but i went to the church and i you know i saw the project they were doing and when i you know said everything i said by the grace of god um i want everybody to sow a seed for this project just jokingly do you know the pastor would call me like two three weeks later he said in all they have met they have prayed and they have fasted him he was saying Ka, apostle you are really anointed i said no, no 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 in my mind it's not just the anointing it's a track record listen listen don't wait till you create the same track record you, you will you will time time cannot wait for you leverage on someone else's sacrifice The condition that was available to create that track record by another may not be available for you. Are you sharing what I'm saying? I know lecturers, and I say it with all humility, and it doesn't mean you should meet me after the service, but I know lecturers that I have called and said, Sir, please, so, so, so has met me that there is a problem in your department and this thing is going to affect him ah my apostle how are you you are even calling me and i say sir please i'm not saying you should uh, do anything but please sir can you look into this issue and the person will just come out and say i passed i graduated it's only me that knows what happened between me and the other person may someone discuss your rising even when you are sleeping that when you are while you are sleeping someone is saying look do you know sam i know how he will rise come on now listen those who understand this never get stranded no sir no sir no sir there has to be somebody to speak the voice that speaks for you is the ladder that you will use to climb in the destiny of life you don't pay attention to what i'm telling you to be at your peril because someone is receiving already the answer this is how god will bless men in this season that's why i tell you when god says it's a year of triumph believe him it doesn't take time it just takes the right voice speaking for you hallelujah i have entered offices today i have no business entering it because of the endorsement endorsement Who has endorsed you man of god i know you are anointed but you are sweating all around with posters flying everywhere and saying please invite me give me 30 minutes out no 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 you don't have to do those gimmicks who around has had the credibility and is willing to endorse you hallelujah i will never forget one one of our ladies when she was preparing to get married when she went to meet her mother her mother said i don't have anything to tell you i don't even know this guy just go and meet apostle whatever apostle says think of it leaving somebody's destiny in my hands i called the mother i said mommy this guy is a very nice guy he said apostle you are saying that i said yes from that day there was no challenge again lord raise somebody to speak for me or raise someone to endorse me raise someone to endorse my business raise some raise someone to endorse my life my destiny there has to be somebody to speak for you listen let me show you that jesus immediately they get back to jesus where did they take him to the temple there were two men that endorsed him are we together immediately they took him one prophetess called anna had been there praying and fasting she lifted him and began to speak and then Simeon the prophet began to speak when John was among different people when John saw him John said behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world in the presence of everybody 
Somebody must speak to you in the presence of everybody. Don't be angry that men are doubting you. You have not done anything to bless them. Why should they not doubt you? Listen, listen, let me tell you. Do you know, I say this with all humility. There have been people who by the grace of God, they started out in ministry and the church was not growing the ministry was grounded and all they needed sometimes they just call and say man of god please so many people listen to your messages in this region you are not here you don't have a branch me i'm here you know i love god and these people never come to my church and then they make arrangement and the day i'm going for those meetings some of those churches don't even have plenty of people but they have multiple overflows those times why because somebody that the people believe in has appeared are you hearing what i'm saying now and then the moment i speak and i'll say oh this is my a, a, a pastor friend a great man a man of integrity i love him with all my heart and immediately it looks like a one second or five seconds talk but the members just say i found my pastor since i can't come to zaria i found the person that can represent him that's why sometimes people foolishly carry my picture for meetings that i'm not coming they don't care whether i say yes or no they just start producing the posters in advance first because they think it's endorsement sometimes it doesn't work but when you have a man truly who can speak for you brothers and sisters i don't see the witch or the wizard that will tie you ladies have married cheaply because someone recommended them brother i've been praying honestly there's this lady i've been looking ah no 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 this lady is a blessing i tell you if it's this lady you are sure of joy and peace in your life whether in plenty or in lack and the brother says I've, I've, my prayer has been answered a few months later they are married but do you know the same way people's destinies have been cut short somebody was about to rise but a bad talk from someone brought him down they were about to give him a job he said don't give this guy a job he worked with me he's too cement he, maybe the guy has repented oh do you know paul had to do this for onesimus it's in your bible accept him i know he was once so 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 and so but now just accept him there are people here all those who know you knew your yesterday you have repented today you need a fresh voice that will tell people this is not Saul this is now Paul because the, the, the predicament of being Saul is destroying your breakthrough who today must speak and say no 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 this guy was an armed robber but January he repented are you hearing what I'm saying some of us our past will never let us go they know that you used to be around following every man yes that was your past but now you are born again and jesus is lord of your life yet all the people in your life are people who knew you 1997 so the moment they see a responsible godly man coming they call and say kai um you know david Dam, i wouldn't have told you it's just because you are my brother this is not a good choice I command every voice that speaks when you are about to rise the moment there is consultation among your destiny helpers to to lift you there are voices there are pastors today that should not be begging for bread partners wanted to sow into their lives but somebody said i saw his poster with a and b's poster and immediately over 70 ministrations cancelled just because somebody recommended you badly i pray any voice in the name of Jesus that has been speaking evil against your destiny, I silence that voice right now. Shout amen. I silence that voice right now. I silence that voice right now. Please sit down. Sit down. Hallelujah. Cheap victory because a man showed up. Quantum leap because an endorser showed up. There are pastors who their destinies have changed overnight. A man of God they invited somewhere could not make it. And he'll just say, please, can you go and stand for me? That was a meeting that their level of grace and experience should not take them there. And they stood there and they did well that day. After the meeting, there are seven or eight pastors. And they say, sir, please, can you come to our, for our meeting? Can you come for our meeting? Etc, etc. 
there is no meeting brothers and sisters that i will go for that afterward somebody from that meeting will carry the wondrous works of god to another region this is how we have grown as a ministry this is how we have grown, even financially the blessing that has come from people are we together now i remember someone one time sewing into the ministry and he said that him i think he's a critical person he hates men of god many men of god are fake they are not serious but when he listened to my message and his mentor he, he had his mentor whoever that person was listening to my message he just said no we'll be sowing into this ministry every month i tell you every month he sows a seed to koinonia and a seed to my life do i know him i have only communicated with him on text but endorsement don't trivialize what i'm saying endorsement someone you are selling products and you are doing retail whereas a hotel somewhere or whatever needs your product in wholesale but they don't trust you and you will not be given the opportunity to prove your trust you will only be given the opportunity to be trusted based on somebody who already knows you who they believe and someone will say some answer ah, listen if he's a mecca eh, i can tell you he will deliver your chickens every time if he does not deliver it just take it at my risk and all of a sudden they will just sign it and instead of selling one one chicken somebody will come and say it's two five you say we'll give you 700 and all those arguments for hours just to buy one chicken you will start doing wholesale delivery your life has changed Blessings. music artists how many music artists have been suffering as if god didn't call them beautiful voice but no voice to speak for you beautiful voice but no voice to speak they only invite you if everybody they invited is busy then they'll say sorry honestly this program is in three hours I, are you free just come and cover our shape you need a voice say i need a voice, I need a voice. say I need a, I need a man yeah you need the coming of someone in your life to speak for you what opportunities have you been given were you giving it or you looked for it by yourself are you seeing the secret to hardship where you have to look for everything by yourself who has called you to say there is a big opportunity i cannot handle it but here you go like whoever is going to get this job now there are times they've invited me for almost every invitation that we honor there are a few others we have to turn down and there are times in my spirit i have felt led to lift certain people and i call those people and say i'm sorry i can't come their heart is paining them and i say no 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 no. but this person cannot call but i know someone i can recommend for you do you believe me ah apostle we believe you we have been praying okay invite us so and so he will bless you case closed i don't want my life to be hard though the bible said the way of the fool is hard wisdom that voice that must speak in my life this has been my prayer i'm sharing with you my secret prayer lord who is the person everybody is buying land they say there is no land it's a lie it's just that all the important people have bought it the day you come they'll say please so so said they should give him land i've shared a testimony here that i heard years ago um and i'll reiterate it very quickly someone who wanted to um i think get admission in nda and then the the required height level the person did not have that required height level and you know military people they are very serious well that's it he returned back to zaria and then met the emir and the emir sent that they should go and tell the commandant they should go and tell the man that the emir has added the height of the person who is adding your height in this wicked world listen this our world is fierce and wicked who is adding your height when people stand and conspire we must destroy benga we must make sure he does not rise who is the voice authorized to stand and say no not this 
I will show you why doors don't open. Because the truth is, I want to admit this with all humility. Many of us are already prepared for the next level. But we don't know the endorsement is the key that we need. The truth is, if it's music artist, God has honored this ministry with great people. If it's intellectuals, there are some of you seated right now. One endorsement. I remember a gentleman who came here um, some time ago, a medical doctor. And he discovered um, something. He, was, he got the patent for um, reproduction of something to reproduce a particular device that can check, I think it can check your heartbeat and whatever without taking blood from your body. Very smart guy. He came here. And I told him, I said, please go and meet our daddy so that they will connect him with Professor Nock and like that and I think so on and so on. Like that, like that. We've not seen the guy again. I want to believe that God has lifted him and I pray that it is so. I made up my mind that every voice that must speak into my life, whatever price it will take, I will pay to secure the endorsement of that voice. It's not human worship. Hallelujah. Ora Robert, help Benny. He's in trouble. And all of a sudden, somebody's prayer point becomes a gift. Hallelujah. There are men of God who just... Do you know there are certain stages, even ministerially speaking sincerely, if God grants you the privilege and the access to stand on that stage, as far as ministry is concerned, God has helped you. There are certain individuals, if God has given you the privilege to see, God has changed your life. Endorsements, opportunities. Number three, what is the implication of the presence of men? in our lives number three what is the implication of the presence of men in our lives access to financial and material resources write it down access to financial and material resources part of the fringe benefits of the coming of a man into your life access to financial and material resources listen listen every one naira every material resource you pray for is currently in the hands of a human being right now praise the lord every land koinonia will ever buy in any nation of the world is currently in the possession of somebody now every transfer that you have been fasting for into your account there is an entity holding it now like this the money for your house is in somebody's account so when you start building a house it will not fall from heaven transfer will be made transfer will be made transfer will be made human beings there are human beings that are generous enough to change your life listen koinonia hear me it is a false understanding to believe everybody is greedy there are absolutely benevolent human beings your own price is to win their heart you can go to bed hallelujah and lot went with him he didn't say and lot believed what he believed lot just walked with him hallelujah do you know that someone was sharing a testimony somewhere uh, I think it was a lady or so that was sharing a testimony somebody she knows they were walking along a path a road and then the person was quite a senior man and then he met a very big man and he was greeting the man and whilst he greeted the man he gave the man you know the person she was walking with now that stranger rich stranger gave some money and looked at her and said ah young lady he decided to give her something too just like he was not even counting she said when she counted it she found that it was 50,000 just because she was walking with who think of think of your prayer point disappearing simply because you are walking with the wrong person it's the same way you can be walking with somebody and you check and find out ah, I left my house with 500,000 now I have 12,000 what happened 
the presence of someone took something away from you. Access to financial resources. Your money is in the hands of men. Please believe me. Your money is not just in the hands of business. You can sell anything you want to sell. It's a human being that will have to buy it for you to be paid. Men can bless you for no reason. You must believe this dimension exists. That a man can just bless you. I've had the privilege of blessing people in a lavish and a generous way. For no reason. I don't even know some of them. Hallelujah. Let me share a testimony that will bless you. I share these testimonies to encourage our faith. I came back from Abuja this just this evening, just coming here now. And um, yesterday in the night, I decided to take a cab just to go and get something to eat before returning to sleep. And while I got there, my, my elder sister came to give me a surprise visit and we chatted for a while and then, you know, saw her off. Uh, on my way returning, I asked the man, I said, how much is your bill? Probably because the man saw me buying things for my sister and the rest. Ah, the guy said, oh, guy, anything you give me? I said, no, no, please don't tell me all those things. Just, you, you are working. You are working with intelligence. What exactly, how much is your money? And then he mentioned, okay, X amount. He said, oh, guy, you know, I told you I have three children. Because I asked him. I said, oh, you have children. How many children? He said, three. I said, you're a hardworking man. You know, we're talking on the way coming. I said, I like you. You're a diligent man, striving to make sure you provide for your family. And then when he asked me how much, I said, no, but you know that's not the price. So how much is the last price? Then he now told me the truth. He reduced it by some amount. And the Holy Spirit ministered to me. He said, I should take whatever was in my pocket, everything, everything that was in my pocket. I don't know how much, but it was, it was nothing less than 25000 He said, take everything and give the man. As soon as I draw from the car, I said, Mr. Man, you do not know me, but go and tell your lovely children that you met a man who decided to bless them make sure you take care i removed everything i dropped it the man was afraid ah this is, i hope this is not blood money and etc 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 i just dropped it and said okay this is where i'm highlighting god bless you until i entered the man was shocked that's the kind of experience that is i didn't know you will answer me this way There are such occurrences on earth. I'm giving you an example. That's somebody's prayer. Now, it may look like it's 20 or 25,000 or whatever. I know it looks small to some of you. But that's the same way it can be 200 and something million. The same way it is that trivial. The same way it was. There are obedient people. Let me tell you. There are people who pack out of their house and give you if God said it. But if they have not had God, you can be dying. They will look at you like this. There are people who the voice of God is their trigger. But to get that voice of God, you have to invoke this and say, Oh God, let let send this man. This man has what it takes to wipe my tears. Financial and material privileges accessed sim not through intelligence and business acumen, through the understanding that men can do this. I started doing something some time ago. I don't do it again. When I go to get fuel, whoever is before me, no matter how much he wants to fill his tank, I pay for it. I just said I would do it as a seed. If I go to get fuel and you happen to be before me, whether it's a bucket you are carrying, as long as it's within my capacity, I will sow into it. And I've done that and I watch the joy that it, it, it produces in the life of people. Watch this. One time, I, re I remember, I think it was one of these, was it Salah or something like that? A, a, party, a man came and I saw him bring out 200 naira. Ah, the wife was at the back of the bike. Just, he even just put one leg down and opened that this thing. Just, it's as if you just press it in and take it back. How much with 200 naira fuel? I, I looked at him. I said, please fill the tank for him. The man just turned. Ah, he was greeting me. I said, fill the tank. When he finished, I just waved. I said, madam, bye-bye. You know, this and that and that. And the man just looked at me. Do you know why I'm doing this? One, because I love God. Two, I am activating the same thing because that's what I want in my own life. I want a situation where one day somebody says, Joshua Selman, I hear you need a house. This I hear you need five acres of land for koinonia. Take. I hear you need joy and peace. 
I believe it. Oh, if you like, don't believe it. I believe it with all my heart. It's not laziness. It's a provision that is in the kingdom. How many people have gotten free house? They are not in ministry. One day, somebody just said, come and escort me. And they are sharing houses and you just got your own. And left quietly and ran out of the town. Just quietly got a lawyer and said, sign this. It's called prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. That's what God is getting ready to bring for us in this season. Prepared blessings. Where you will wake up in the morning with a text. And you check the text. And all of a sudden a man sends you a text wanting nothing in return i'm not talking of bribe look at this many of our parents some of you know that i'm telling the truth they are brilliant according to their level of sacrifice they should be working at the the highest echelon of the government but today nobody can speak for them there are many people who should be legislators doing very well nobody is speaking for them there are buildings houses that should be completed but there is no help because you start on your own you are receiving twenty thousand naira every month but you know one day you can just be passing and somebody will just look and say once in a while we just want to bless people and it just happens to be you dr mike mudok shared it a story one time how that i think it was his dad of blessed memory or mom they performed a surgery and it was about $25,000. The people had exhausted all their monies and, you know, the hospital just called them and said, once in a while, we like to do good things to people, just like charity, and it happens to be you. I was told about a woman of God in Abuja today that went to a particular place and saw, um, it's like their chapel devastated. She brought out $8 million cash and said they should rebuild a house for God from scratch up. I know a man of God in this country. Well, not a man of God, but a rich man. The pastor had been shouting, we need a tent. All of you so we need a tent. We need a tent. Let's beautify the house of God. The rich man just kept quiet as if he doesn't know what they're saying. One day, the guy got up and bought a tent, 25 million cash. They brought it. I'm mentioning these big amounts for a reason. I want to stretch your mind because some of you will never believe it if you like say i'm talking about money no problem i know you don't need it but your destiny needs it <laughs> so you better pay attention in the name of jesus connection with men who can help you do you know sometimes all you need in life is just help you don't need advice you don't need suggestion sometimes all you need uh, you don't need help like spiritual help the direct need if you need a watch just sometimes case closed just that watch sometimes what you need is financial help Hallelujah. when ruth listen when ruth and naomi when naomi stood and was confused did not know what to do and ruth said i'm not going anywhere with you do you know a time came when she went to the field and she saw them gleaning and boa said leave some what did she do just leave some there are there are blessings you will enter into this year that you too you will know that this one no is not me is purely the sovereignty of god and i stand in the name of jesus christ i prophesy it upon you as surely as the lord god of heaven lives may that come to you speedily May that come to you speedily. Everybody shout prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Say it again. Prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Mm. It, it, it is true. It happens. Where somebody just steps in and solves your problem directly. I share with you a testimony those who just got admission in the school of ministry congratulations but you will notice that a supplementary list came out it's not in our culture to release a supplementary list are we together now someone spoke for the students a voice that i honor that we honor i supervised the supplementary list by myself 
there were three people that I honor with every esteem in my life. And when three of them called me, I said, no, 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 I'm under authority too. Bring all the forms of the students who did not get the admission. You, you were just sitting in your house and you saw an alert. And they said, congratulations, but someone spoke for you. Why has it stopped? Why should it not continue in other areas of your life? That somebody will speak for you. You are just sitting, you see an alert with a phone number. And you call and say, who are you? You say, we were discussing. And someone mentioned your name. It has happened to me. It happens all the time. Pray one minute and say, Lord, help us. Financial help us. Please ignore people who think you are wasting your time. Pray this prayer with faith. Lord, send help us. The house of God needs help us. My family needs the ministry of help us. I need at this point in my life is a genuine helper, no string attached. No, thank you for investment. But what I need now is not an investment, I need a helper. A helper. My family is about packing up. I need a helper. Please don't joke. This is your destiny. This is a kingdom secret that can wipe your tears. I cry for a helper. The gift of men. He gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto men to the end that they be established. He gave gifts to men that could be helped in the time of recession he is still giving gifts to men in a time of lack and want oh I believe I believe I believe I believe Jesus this is someone's breakthrough tonight I believe I believe I believe Must be paid through salary. Who said the helper cannot arise and wipe it? Who said the roofing of the house must be done by your savings? There is a God in heaven who can arise for men. Hallelujah. Please sit down. I tell you, my spirit is stirred with what I'm telling you. Many of you will thank me. You will see your lives change overnight. Don't mind people who think what I'm sharing with you is not making sense. I show you what can change your life. Brothers and sisters, is one of the biggest secrets of this work you see by the grace of God. There are few things in this ministry, let me tell you. There are few things in this ministry, few things in this ministry that are actively being paid for from the central house. Every week, every time there is somebody rising to handle something. When we used to use other venues, there are people who just arise and say, look, I will pay for the venue. I will pay for this. How much does it cost to transport people all through after service? I will pay for it. Don't think it's everybody who must say, what will I get in return? There are people, whatever you want to give them, God has given them already. They don't need anything. They just want to bless you. What is man that thou art mindful of? Number four, what is the implication of the presence of men in your life?
I call it impartation, access to impartation and the prophetic. Access to impartation and the prophetic. Why do you need men in your life? Their presence can guarantee you access to impartation. What is impartation? Transference of grace for possibilities. Transference of grace for possibilities. Men move according to the kinds and the dimensions of graces at work in them. No matter how you cry for God to anoint you, if you ignore men, you will never. Do you know, look at me. Some of you, all you need in your life is just that prophetic push. Prophetic push. Bishop Oyedeko said every time they are busy celebrating winners and say, wow, this is how the ministry has risen. They will just go to Papa Ia Deboe and you just lay hands on him and say, you have seen well, but a new level. And that's the end of it. Prophetic push is capital. It can bless your life. It can wipe your tears. One prophetic word. I've shared with you countless testimonies here to the glory of God. Maybe I'll just review one or two. Remember the story I told you about the two women? I went to buy sugar cane. And two mama, old women, old women. I'm not sure they could even speak English. And they were trying to remove, they were trying to, uh, um, what do they call it? Yes, to remove the wrapper so that they remove the small money to pay for sugar cane. And I said, ah, ah, I may not have much, but come on, these are my mothers. Let me bless them. And I just bought the sugar cane. I don't think I spent up to 100 naira. I can't remember how much exactly. And those women were so touched. They were blessing me and blessing me. And one of them said, my son forever walk upon gold. How can a woman who is trying to remove five naira, she knew what she carried on her head. Listen, don't wait for people's physical result to believe they have it. You will be joking. You may see a man with 10 members, but he, must have, he can have a kingmaker anointing. He can anoint you and you have a stadium full of membership. If all you are looking for is someone else's result, no. Some results are not meant to appear physically. They are meant to be transferred and reflected in the life of another. It's called a kingmaker anointing. They never become kings themselves, yet they are the ones who anoint and throne and dethrone kings. Those of you who have kings in your village, you know there are people who sit down with the kings. They are called kingmakers. They never become kings themselves, yet they are the ones who consecrate kings. Saul never became a king himself, but he was one who made kings. And he was the one through God who rejected kings. Let me tell you, there are people who carry graces. They may not physically look like it. They may not be millionaires, but they never lack. Quarter to shame, God will always arise. That's a grace you need. Because all you need in life is not just money. Bishop Oedeko calls it the grace of on time. When things come too late, they can kill you. They should come on time. How he got that anointing, he said he was a particular man of God. I don't know if it was Archbishop Benson Idahosa or whoever it was who, he, you know, sent him on errand, sent to Edeko on errand then when he was just starting and to show up at a particular time. And the person showed up fast and, and Oedeko showed up fast. And then the man looked at him and said, ah, you mean you came at the time? He said, from today, I impart upon you the grace of on time before a need arises. The supply comes there is such a grace now you may see people move they are not millionaires but they they carry that possibility the moment shame is about to come something must happen to change that result it's a grace impartation by god's grace we have lavishly received impartations in this place impartation I have received impartations. I'm like a bee. I'm a product of strange graces. Jesus himself being the chiefest of them all. But there are human vessels. There are men who have entered my life and just wiped my tears in certain areas. Impartation. And then a prophetic push. I told you prophecy is both revelatory and creative. The more superior dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension. Revelatory dimension gives you faith. 
and direction. But when you get to the end of your road, you need the creative dimension of prophecy. Where someone can look at your life and say, look, physically speaking, there is no hope. But in the name of Jesus, I introduce a reality, an equation into your life. I was teaching in, in, in Akure and I told them the anointing is, the, is an advantage. It's an advantage. It's an advantage. It's an advantage. Prophecy. This ministry you see, there are constant prophecies being bombarded on our heads. Prophecy. 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 Where is the prophetic voice pushing you to the next level? Where is the prophetic voice? That's why every time I minister here, I pray and I speak over your life from the depth of my heart. It's not just copy men of God. I understand the power of the prophetic. Second Chronicles 20, 20. It says, believe in the Lord your God. So shall he be established. Then it says, believe his prophets. So shall you prosper. In other words, don't believe them. And what happens to you? He says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, were they preserved. The prophetic is real. Not just calling names and numbers. But the ability to speak realities into being. Taking an advantage of this mystery. The capacity to create things. Because everything that appears comes from the unseen realm. So a man can program your destiny through prophecy like an alarm clock. You can program an alarm clock to ring at a time. You see that? You program an alarm clock 327. And the clock will be quiet as if it's dead. 327 on the dot. That's how a man's destiny can be programmed. A man can shift a breakthrough that should happen when you are 49 to happen when you are 25. Prophecy. Prophecy can shift possibilities to and fro. You must understand this. By this time tomorrow, Elisha said, he didn't say God told me, by this time tomorrow, when he met the Shunammite woman, he said, what should I do to you? Should I talk to the king? He said, no, no, I live among my own people. What should I? He said, well, we don't have a child. Hear what he said. He placed a time. That's one of the ministry of the prophetic is to place a time for your miracle. Because the clock must ring. He said to appoint unto them that morn in Zion. To appoint. So something that would have happened next year, they take it and make it happen next week. It's a superior dimension of the prophetic. A woman will be coming here, I'm sure, one of these days to share her testimony. She sent a testimony that touched me. Now, this is not the first time we're getting these testimonies, but they are very powerful. I don't have time to look for it in my phone, but I will tell you. She said, I think we were in a program. I don't know which of the meetings now, whether in Yola or whatever. Yes, they were part of those who uh, were in the welfare cooking, cooking for us. And I always pray for all those who cook, those who drive me and cook for me every time I go for any meeting. Now, I prayed for the woman and according to her, she said, I told her that, what do you want? And she said she wanted twins. And she said it jokingly. And I said, in the name of Jesus, may the Lord give you twins. Nothing really happened. She got pregnant two weeks after that time. That's the first news. This is a woman that had been barren. And, but when they checked her, there was only one child glory be to god that's all right at least i'm happy that i'm pregnant now and she said just like um i think maybe a month ago they went back to check and they were twins twins right there you see that she sent me a text actually because she started having some little pain like birth pains and they were saying most likely they will use cs so she shared that testimony and she was trying to encourage me to pray for her so she can give birth you know safely and then come and testify the creative dimension of prophecy that can place realities. Children just come through a man. They come from God. The moment Mary said, be it unto me, she was pregnant. It's just the body of the child and the genetics that come through the man. Children are a heritage from the Lord. He said, when he led captivity captive, 
he gave gifts to men the question i want to ask you tonight before we pray is have you received your own because the bible says that he gave those gifts to the end that we attain a level you have not attained that level meaning you have not received those gifts have you received the strategies the ideas the wisdom have you received the endorsements accreditations hmm. have you received financial and material resources i'm speaking to somebody from the depth of my heart there are testimonies i can begin to share with you now but if i say some of these testimonies that they are not it's not even safe for some of us because it may just push you through seasons you are not ready for but brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth anybody that tells you that god cannot fast track the life of a man is he joking look at my life look at my life i've heard of testimonies of people in this recession people have arisen and done things you cannot imagine one of the gifts that god has given me in my life i draw me to the leaders and the workers all the time is the gift of men the gift of men is greater than money the gift of men is greater than money there are some things money cannot do are we together listen if you labor on to death i've given this example here you labor on to death and you get five naira and somebody walks up and gives me five naira are, are five naira is the same no your sweat and your life was drained for that five naira it's, it's called the mystery of hardship when you work for everything you know we encourage diligence here but your lifetime is not enough for you to get every result by working you need an advantage and that advantage is shrouded in men not oil not real estate not banking men 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 who have you ignored in your life whose voice must speak for you in this season it's not that there are no jobs there are people getting jobs every time just like someone is about to get one now but who is speaking for you oh there are no contracts please keep quiet don't say there are no contracts with 7.2 billion people on earth are you joking there are no contracts there is no contract for you but there's contract but a voice can make it for you come and do a miracle a miracle today you will do a miracle a miracle today listen when you get into trouble hear me who speaks for you there are some of us it's not all about money when you get into trouble who speaks for you there are some of us if things don't work out in our lives we are dead there's nobody to arise and speak for you the bible says valiant men came to david they entered a covenant that they must make him king who is ready to die to see that your cause you criticize a man of god and there's nobody to back him no sir there should be somebody no 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 no, no. don't say this against pastor femi I love him. Are we together? They just said they had some money in your office. You are about to be thrown out. You are in trouble. And you are innocent. Just because you are working in the accounts department. They are about to jail you. In the prison. In the, in the police station. There is nobody to speak for you. Before the law court. Nobody to speak for you. They are about to throw you in. Nobody to speak for you. Hapa. That's a life with no favor. That every time trouble arises, somebody will come and say, Look, ordinarily speaking, you are supposed to do A and B and C to Emeka, but I come in. Have you seen people who, when they are fighting, they come and stand and say, Don't beat this person. It's better to beat me. Who can cover you like that? Politicians call them Godfather, God, whatever. Brothers and sisters, we have ignored this to our detriment. One of the blessings God has given me in my life 
it's not just divine immunity and protection god has raised men i can tell you this men who will stand and they will mind blood coming out of their bodies to make sure they protect my interests and what we represent and i do not take them for granted but i am grateful i have been shocked a man of god somewhere once said something that was not too nice about me and i mean that person i i didn't even know it was when he apologized more than 100 people called him blasted nonsense out of his life and said god will punish you and punish you and join and punish you you mix every the baby and the bad water and think everybody it was something that was trying to show maybe like all these men those you you know you know what i mean now maybe somebody put his hand in something that is ungodly time shall tell you know those kind of sarcastic statements and my goodness and i'm not talking of young people married women the person will say his testimony and blast the man and say are you stupid the man sent me a text he thought i knew about it honestly speaking it was when i got i said no 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 offense i don't have what why, why i mean i don't keep any offense what for can you have people like that there are men who can arise to cover your shame just because they know you they will arise and say no 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 i will cover your shame for you we have some prayers to pray this night if our parents had this they would not be struggling like this because every other person who has risen has exactly what they have educationally whatever it is no help no help no help you work hard you go to school almost as if you would die you graduate and your your certificate becomes like a toilet tissue nobody to speak on it the only thing there is the registrar's signature and life will look at you and say no i need another signature come on this is this is this is too regular show me another one you are praying and fasting but you need to start praying strategically don't just pray and say lord send angels yes angels are important but you need a physical entity moved by those angels there was a particular time they were going to this paul was afraid of entering a city and god said no no don't be afraid i have many people there nobody will touch you i have many people many men there i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. Listen, one of these four things will become your prayer point. I'm going to give us 10 minutes and I will not interrupt you. 10 minutes alone with God. You know what aspect. The Bible says he gave gifts unto men. Ask God, Lord, where is my own? Where is my own gift? Where is the man you have sent with the financial blessing? Where is the man you have sent, oh God, with the prophecy for my next level? Where is the man you have sent with the idea? Where is the man to endorse my life, my ministry? Ten minutes. Please, I don't know how you will pray. But the next ten minutes, instrumentalists help us. Cry before the God of heaven. And say, Lord, I want to receive my own gift. You are giving gifts to men.
churches through men unto men he gave wisdom to men pray he gave endorsement he gave recommendations he gave access to platforms through men unto men through men unto men are you praying don't be distracted Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come. In this season of triumph, oh God. Enough of delay. Enough of delay. Lord, I'm tired of struggling. One man away. One man away. That man must show up in my destiny. the Lord. Listen, listen. The Lord gave me a promise that when I teach this message, he will release radical breakthroughs to the lives of men. Believe this. You will hear of people's lives changing overnight. Overnight. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, can't you just believe for once? Doesn't your spirit bear witness that this is the key to what brought you here. Men, an advocate. Men. Listen, listen. He said they are taken for a prey, but none say yet restore. They capture you, but there is no man to shout restore. Prayer point number one. Oh God, whoever holds the strategy, the wisdom, the idea, that I need to experience triumph. I open the gates of my spirit and I receive them as gifts. Go ahead and pray. The gift, the gift of wisdom, the gift of understanding, the gift of strategies, business strategies through men, Strategies through men. One man can change your company. One man can change your business. One man can link you up with what ten years has not been able to give you. One man can open up the gates of ministry. Send that man, oh God. Send that woman, oh God. Send that man, oh God. Send that woman, oh God. I open the gates of my spirit. 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 I receive them as gifts. Hallelujah. One man. 
one man the difference between you and the next level prayer point number two listen father i have the talent i am ready for the next level but there is no ladder to climb the voice that must endorse me for the next level i call you by prophecy lift your voice and pray the voice endorsing my papers the voice endorsing my products the voice endorsing my services the voice endorsing the hand of god on my life i call you in the name of jesus prophesy 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 it's time to rise somebody somewhere has what it takes to speak for you somebody somewhere has what it takes to speak for you call them call them koinonia call them call them for your family call them for your life the man to endorse your marriage the man to endorse access to the man of god who carries the grace you need the man to endorse your business the man to endorse your employment Thy kingdom come, thy will be. Pray, 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 pray with all your heart. Lord, I'm a master's holder. I'm ready for the job. I need an endorser. I'm a PhD holder. I'm a graduate. I need an endorser. Lord, I'm a businessman. I have paid my price. I have done my homework. I need a voice. A voice to speak at the gate. hallelujah hallelujah listen let me tell you something if you're a parent here yeah, everything you pay you pray for yourself pray for your children whether they are in your womb or they are everywhere i hear what i'm saying if you're a lady here as you pray you lay your hands on your womb. you don't wait till you get married come on john was filled with the holy ghost in his water's womb you can speak favor to be waiting for that 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 child formed in favor prayer point number three you are going to cry now listen 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 i told you there is the sovereign dimension of god's will you are going to cry for help help don't cry for money lord a helper can come i call him to my life lift your voice and pray Azataka parataka tokatesh, a helper, a helper. Are you praying? A helper. A helper. A helper. It can't be this difficult. It can't be this difficult. It can't be this difficult. Bring a helper to make my life easy, oh God, so that I can have the time to serve you, so that I can have the concentration to focus on my assignment. Lord, I'm tired of financial distractions. Lord, I'm tired of material destruction. Send a helper to clear the way that I can serve you. Send a helper. Are you praying? Are you praying? Don't look around. Pray. Shaka taka ta. Leke te proto soto te te. E proto soto kota. A helper must show up. A helper must show up. A helper must show up.
Alléluia. Alléluia. The last prayer point. Kai, I tell you, I'm, 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 I, I feel the joy in my spirit for the prayers we are praying. I know this prayer is doing something in the realm of the spirit. The last prayer point. I want you to pray this with all your heart. You are going to cry and say, Lord, the prophetic push. That one you can have it this night, right now. That one is available for you. It's up for you to receive. You are going to pray and say, Lord, the prophetic push. That push I need. That impartation, that prophetic push for my ministry, for my life, for my family. Lord, my family is in hellfire. We must come out this night. Lift your voice and pray. Pray outside, pray. Online, pray. Wherever you're connecting from any nation of the world, pray, pray. Pray your way to a new level. Pray your way to a new dimension. Pray your way. forget this kingdom key it's a mystery that has been responsible for the, the mysterious rising of stars no father no mother notwithstanding they rose no education no experience notwithstanding they rose come on now life delayed and battered the enemy ate a major part of their life but in one year they recovered through men through men never forget this he gave gifts to men he gave gifts to men man of god i'm 45 years i've wasted my life don't worry one man one man can step into your life and answer the question of 10 years man of god my business is grounded listen listen do you know while the lord asked me to prepare for this message I was watching channels TV and I saw how that Eric L was about to pack up because they were in debt. It was so much and imagine a big one of the biggest airlines in the country. I love them of course. I know that there are people who work there who might be listening right now. And for me I felt so sad because I know how our administration depends on that airline alone. There are places only them can go and I started thinking I said my god that means there has to be another plan. And the only other plan can be chartered services. And all of a sudden, I just had that Amcon representing the federal government said they are too they are too important to let them crash. And they said, We are coming to wage you. I said, This is my message. This is my message. The federal government, how many airlines? I don't want to mention names, have crashed in our presence. Federal government waved them and said, you, you are in debt. But that a man is almost falling, and then a hand picks him. You are too valuable to fall. So I help you. Listen. So you are making a mistake and you are about to die. You don't even know what kingdom key. Then God wakes somebody to start interceding for you. Because you are too valuable. Before you catch the revelation, someone else is already praying for you. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Honestly, God sees my heart. And God knows that I'm praying this prayer from the depth of my heart. 
don't worry whether you are standing or not just a sign of faith I want to pray for you the Lord has declared that is this year of triumph let's not make him look like a liar you've heard the testimonies of people hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ the sovereign Lord the one who orchestrated this message I pray for you prophecy number one is that in the name of Jesus the son of the living God beginning from this night a man everybody one by one a man must show up in your destiny a man must show up in your destiny hallelujah prayer point number two Paul said once and again I desire to come to you but Satan hindered us Satan hinders men there are some of you God answered your prayer since last year but there is a spirit somewhere sitting on your breakthrough in the name of Jesus I'm, I'm prophesying I'm just speaking in tongues in the name of Jesus every force sitting on your gate to make it not open for your helpers I cast those forces out of your life I cast those forces out of your life I cast those forces out of your life listen whether it's an activity of witchcraft an activity of causes projections of men in their anger the scourging tongues of men to cause the constellations to fight you in the name of Jesus Christ who died and rose again I command your gates open I command your gates open I break the power of divination I break yokes and curses I break the power of divination When Jesus got to the grave of Lazarus, others were crying, but they did not know even in the grave, if a man comes, resurrection can happen. The grave was there, waiting for a man. When Jesus came, he said, "Ah, uh -uh, hold on, Lazarus. Only the voice of a man could call another man, not the voice of an animal, the voice of a man. And he said, Lazarus, come forth comfort comfort I want to call some things I want to call some things back they left you but they are not missing they are still on earth they left you but hear me they are not missing in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy whatever has left your life whatever has left your hands money that you lost business that you lost relationships opportunities I prophesy restoration now restoration now restoration now listen listen I don't care what happened I, I don't want to know the story behind it in the name of Jesus Christ even if it's a body part that disappeared I call a new one now hallelujah hallelujah whatever is the works of your hands that for some reason you do your best but it's like it cannot break through some levels there are people here who are business people there are people here who are working and they've been in the same position forever there are people who don't just move forward in the name of Jesus whatever has tied your feet so that there is no speed in your life 
I command supernatural speed right now. Supernatural speed right now. Supernatural speed right now. Hallelujah. Wasi pray. Listen. There are men being influenced by demons to stop the moment the God, the Spirit of God is moving the will of a man to your favor. They show up. Just like a man shows up. They show up and they impart fear. There are people who would have done your business but just when they wanted to put money somebody said be careful oh, and they went away. There are people who would have bought your product in box but someone showed up and said do you really need it? In the name of Jesus. Whoever is stopping men from blessing you Whoever is being used by demon spirit to stop men from blessing you, I silence their voices right now. I silence their voices right now. Every council of Ahitophel speaking in dark places against the people of God, I reverse their pronouncements right now. Hallelujah last prayer point and Jesus grew in stature in wisdom in stature and in favor with God you can have favor with God and not have favor with men I want to speak favor we must attack hardship and do you know listen listen by now you know but do you know why we do these things because we want to concentrate on doing the work of the kingdom these things are distractions thinking about money is a distraction thinking about all these all these jargons you can't pray you spend three hours you are not praying for souls you are praying out of against trouble it's a distraction you can't have the peace to plan your family well because you sit down and there's tension everywhere why because of all kinds of issues in the name of jesus i pray May a fresh mantle of favor, a mantle of favor, a real solid mantle of favor, may it land upon your life right now. Favor with men, favor with men, receive it in the name of Jesus. Favor with men, I place it upon your life. Favor with men, favor with strangers, favor with men favor with strangers favor with diplomats favor with men of God favor with politicians favor with business people in the name of Jesus listen every time a man is looking for someone to bless may you show up there suddenly in the name of Jesus Christ anytime they are discussing someone to lift May the angel of the Lord introduce your name. Hallelujah. The angel saluted Mary and said, Hail Mary, thou art favored among all women. And she wondered, what manner of salutation is this? These are the forces that produce certain strange levels of breakthrough. Tomorrow you will turn and see that things are working for you. And people say, how did you do it? You are no more qualified than me. Your father is nobody in the society. And you tell them, I understood that there is something called the gift of men. The gift of men. The gift of men. The gift of men. In your life. And it will change your life. Lord Jesus, we thank you for tonight. Lord, I have declared your word to your people. In the name of Jesus, let there be a strange performance. We release angels to compel the men that we have called by prophecy. Because some of them have stubborn wheels, but we compel them by the ministry of angels. And we decree and declare that they must show up for every life, business, destiny, and ministry. In the name of Jesus. 
may your life from tonight receive a quantum leap may you have a testimony that will end worry from your life forever and let me just use one minute and extend this prayer to our worrying families because some of our family members they are almost depressed to death the yoke on their head is too much it's as if they are carrying the whole world there are bills here there's trouble here there's court case here there is police case here there is nobody to help them lord jesus we pray anyone standing here may you represent your family right now as i pray in the name of jesus christ using you as a prophetic point of contact i pray for your loved ones the same thing god is doing here may he reproduce it to them every impossible situation in any family right now that looks like it defies solution this night may a helper qualified to help arise and help if it's a financial problem may a helper arise to help if it's a marital and family problem may a stranger arise and help in the name of jesus christ if it's a spiritual problem may a man with an anointing appear and help in the name of jesus christ Let's lift our hands to Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and just tell him thank you for the miracles, for your grace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just communicate your gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. It is a product of your grace. It's a product of your mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Express your gratitude to him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands in one minute and truly thank him. We are taking our time to thank him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What testimonies that you are a good God. Our lives are the proof that you are dependable. We thank you. Jabrakatu segete palakusi enabakasa. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Good evening. Hallelujah. While, while I sat back there, you know, I was just let me tell you what was in my mind I was just looking at us in in my mind truly and in my spirit and wondering what your life will become like when God is done with you no, not just because of the testimonies the testimonies are a token they are a representation is proof to you that God is with you but let me tell you his commitment is more than these testimonies the implication of his presence in your life is far bigger than this this cannot be all why he's with you and my joy is the knowledge you see vision vision is the ability to see things the way it should be not the way it is vision is the ability to see things that you can look at a weak brother a weak sister a weak gentleman a weak lady and you know the implication of what their lives will become 
on account of what they are receiving please listen it's not a mystery what we are becoming by the power of the word of god and by the ministry of his spirit is not a mystery it's not something we are trying to guess the picture is very clear god has a portrait god has an idea of what a believer should look like after a sufficient season of yieldedness your life should represent something and the bible gives us an idea of it psalm 112 it said blessed is the man that feareth the lord that delighted greatly in his commands no matter how small that man is blessed is the man that can take the risk of reverence for god and delights in his command he says his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the righteous shall be blessed he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and that his righteousness endures forever and you begin to read and see that he, the desire his desire upon his enemies will come to pass the enemies will look at him and only gnash their teeth listen what god is making us become let's trust him you may not trust a preacher you may not trust yourself but trust god trust god because let me tell you you see when he's done with us it will be to him all the glory you will watch your life and say my god so this is what god can do you get the glory you get you take the honor. I just want to say, thank you. you get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say, thank you. Thank you. So we my. Be glorified, be glorified for your grace and your hand. say Lord my life will bring you glory forget about the mockers forget about what does not look like it yet in your life Lord find glory through my life my life will give you glory to bring you glory
life will bring you glory. My life will bring you glory. I praise you. I praise you. Oh. I praise you. I praise you. I see what you're doing one more time, Lord. I lift my hands in praise. I lift my hands in praise. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. I praise you, I praise you, oh Lord, I praise you, Lord we give you all the praise, to you be all the glory, for in my life, Lord, I see what Lord you we declare that forever you will be glorified in our lives forever you will be glorified in this house this remains a place where you will be glorified that men will continue to see your awe and your majesty in and through our lives thank you for making us signs and wonders epistles of your grace epistles of your majesty we thank you in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Hallelujah. For as long as you continue to embrace the person of the Holy Spirit, for as long as you continue to be childlike enough and allow his word to change you, I give you a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Your life will surprise you. It's true. It's true. It's true. The system for the lifting of men in the kingdom will never change. It will never be uniquely constructed just because of you. What you think about it or don't think about it makes no difference. The way, you see, God does not align to our terms. No. We are the ones who will humble ourselves and align to his ways. Are we together? If at all God is merciful, he stretches his hands to bring you not that he stretches to leave his position so the idea is not to invent your way you don't seek god at his terms it's pride and let me tell you something please listen to me many preachers are getting it wrong the way they are building people will frustrate them somewhere along the line it is true now i i must confess to you it is difficult to build people holistically it is very difficult because our individual callings you see the way god works with men is that because of his call upon your life he tilts you towards a dimension of himself and you will have to focus in that area to gain mastery the side effect of that focus is that you will trivialize other areas are we together now if god has called me into the ministry of healing for instance chances are 
that because of my focus my staying in that area all the books i read all the conferences i go to will be along the healing ministry chances are that i will pay little attention to leadership and administration because it has not been captured in my experience with god that is the reason why the unity of the body is important because seeking god in that way has a side effect but he created the unity of the body to give that balance now my refusal to align with the body will make me mentor people along a line and very soon you will see a pattern of deficiency in a particular dimension it was produced by we preachers so i can you can see people who are prosperous powerful but they have no regard for spiritual things no regard no intelligence no nothing excellence yes sir administration yes sir leadership yes sir prosperity as much as we know financially speaking yes sir but their spirits are it's unfortunate the knowledge of god zero passion for god zero evangelism zero conformity to the life and the character of christ zero every time you see a prevalent pattern within a people the communicators the shapers the molders of their understanding are to be blamed and so i admit to you as a man of god that it is difficult to build people holistically it's very difficult very difficult because sometimes you will have to go out of your natural inclination with god to supply that balance but it is worth it if you love people are you getting what i'm saying our passions are not only dependent on the holy spirit they are also dependent on our age ranges please listen carefully this is not what i'm teaching tonight i just want to express something a young man seeking god from between the ages of 10 to maybe 25 or 30 because of the the reality that most likely a major part of that young man's life in terms of needs and all of that is being there is usually someone who is helping him out with his decisions with resources are we together so it is justifiable that that young man does not seem to see any need in developing his mind and trying to make sure that resources are available for instance a man of 35 to 50 has his passions altered because children have come into the equation their development has come into the equation there are responsibilities at this point the implication of your life and your decisions no longer affect you alone they affect society is that true they affect the faith of another person they affect the destinies of the young ones that you are raising biologically or otherwise and then a man who is from 50 upwards his passions his interest is also different so you have to be careful you have to look at these factors in opening your spirit to be mentored are you listening to what i'm saying if i listen to a man of 65 years or 70 years he has a lot to tell me in terms of experience and knowledge but the truth is that it will be unfair for my desire and interest and passions to be forced to resonate with him i will find out that that conformity will affect my growth process are you getting what i'm saying so when god calls a man god does not only give you a message god gives you an age range where your message and ministry becomes effective most preachers don't know this if i preach to elderly people now of say maybe 60 years to 80 years let me tell you the truth they are not going to be touched by my message they will only be impressed that the things they learned old i learned young at the end of that message they won't stand up and say my i couldn't sleep no there is nothing i would tell them that is worth lacking sleep the mistake has been made the lessons have been learned their focus 
is on pouring their lives to a younger generation please listen to me don't hate anybody but be careful who mentors you because you will be a reproduction of not only the mindset but the interests the perspectives is important the bible says david served his generation served his generation a man can be talking to you who has estates a man can be talking to you who has 30 branches as a pastor a man can be talking to you who has raised sons and daughters around the world and the truth is he does not really have any need a man can be talking to you from the perspective of his sabbath he has entered his sabbath experientially there are some things that he will not have the time to teach you are we together they will be focusing on maintaining certain levels not helping you get there because he has arrived there and chances are that when you learn from him you will only maintain your current level he's teaching you maintenance not growth are we together the way I teach and guide people 10 15 years ago I'm still a young man but it's not the same context are we together people are married now they have families their needs are shifting their needs are changing so a young man can have a fellowship where 99 percent of the people are unmarried 99 percent are students just got admission the context of his teaching his example his emphasis i don't expect that kind of person to be teaching on love and relationship and all of that no the the messages in that kind of cycle should be very finite god the holy spirit pressing into god are we together there's no issue of counseling over love and relationship it's on seriousness at that level because the the epicenter of their pursuit should be god to know him but a good leader not just a man of god must be able to bring relevant teachings that align with the transitory processes of people's lives otherwise a time will come where your message may be powerful but no longer relevant you see people only stay under you when they can see the applicability of your messages not the power that is dispensed from them you will be surprised that your message can become so powerful but the context of your communication no longer fits those people so you must learn are you getting blessed I don't want you to fail in life spiritually and otherwise so my assignment is not just to bring the word of god the power of the holy ghost my assignment is to be sensitive and to bring the teachings as we all transition together are we together so that children will not come and you find out that in everything you've learned about god there was no provision to grow spiritually while taking care of your family then you have to live your spiritual life to take care of your family because the preacher did not tell you in his teaching you you know god based on his teaching only if you don't have children but now when you have children there is no system of incorporating other things and the pursuit of god when he was teaching you how to know god you were probably a student who had all the time but right now you are not only a worker you are a supervisor and he's still giving you the template of someone who has eight hours free to love god are you seeing that now and that may no longer work and you will feel guilty that because you could not do the things you were doing before the way you are doing them based on his interpretation he will make you feel you are backsliding not knowing that every face has a strategy for remaining spiritual are you getting what i'm saying now if you don't learn this a day will come certain quality of people will never come to your church because your message does not capture god as presented to people within that frame of influence remember he told elijah eat for the journey is far by the time you become a managing director who may be in a country 
just for two months in a whole year the man of God must be able to bring a strategy for spiritual growth that will give you the same result as an idle student who has eight hours in his disposal otherwise you will find out that you apply your your eight hours with God every day formula and you find out that you are knowing God but your company is crashing and then you say Kai what is all this then he will tell you leave the company and focus on God then you focus on God and find out that something about your life is becoming ineffective many believers are afraid because the things they used to do the transitions in their lives no longer afford them all the time again i never would have believed that my life would be this busy and this occupied time is gold for me you see that that means there must be a system of time redemption such that my spiritual life does not suffer and other things also will not suffer are you getting blessed so we have people who know God but they are not blessed we have people who get to a point and certain kinds of people cannot come to hear the word of God upon their lips the reason is because they do not have an applicable message or a pattern that ministers Christ to them being a man of God is not just having power and the ability to speak hallelujah I used to preach a lot faster than I do now but I came to a point where I had to ask myself what exactly is the purpose of preaching what is the purpose of communication and I found out that the purpose is understanding it is terrible to have people sit under you for many years and really never understand you you may be impressed by their shouting Woo! and you will be so flattered let me tell you the truth with all humility you see there are levels when God brings you to every point that you are under pressure to prove has been proven so settle down and build people you see that yes I will be a foolish person at this level of my life to be proving that the anointing of the spirit is upon me to be proving whether I have access to revelations or not it's not pride these realities have been proven the thing to prove now is the hand of God by the lives you raise now you can go on to a secondary school or a campus and see a young guy under pressure for someone to shout under the anointing because at that level he's seeking for validation so his pressure will be that the, if at the end of that meeting only two people fall he can go back and lock the door for three days say lord what happened that's the reason why you see people like papa e. Adeboe. they just come and say the lord bless you and i mean they are so not concerned whether you shout or not they, they know what they are giving you it's up to you to believe whether you have it or not someone can be falling in their presence and truly speaking you see that they are not interested the point has been proven you can't keep proving a point forever you must win yourself out of that childishness and focus on building people my pride now let me tell you this at the level God has brought me by his grace my pride is no longer my results my pride is your results if i celebrate my results now tea and bread say everybody come and look god gave me tea it's a sign that i've failed god has been fair enough to me now my own result is your result are you seeing that now so my focus has shifted it's not just on myself God has helped me. God has tried for me. I will be wicked to still think about myself. I don't go to preach and wondering, will they give me honorarium? And if yes, how much will it be? No, no. My heart, God sees, is that Lord, you have helped me. You have granted me understanding. Now Lord, let your word prevail over your people. You see that? 
so that from nowhere a young man rises with a strange level of grace a family is able to capture dimensions of God that they can reveal you are finding purpose you are finding your place in life you are causing and stirring revivals across territories this for me is my joy a time must come fatherhood is not all about growing old it's all about pouring yourself into people and witnessing with all humility the consistency of the truths of god the truths of the kingdom that make men great are finite you can know them it is the pursuit of god that is infinite are you getting what i'm saying the the keys that you need to piece together like you can get to a final year and your lecturer say you are finished you say i finished what you say you finished the course it doesn't mean you have finished learning but you have safely exhausted all that it takes to be awarded a certificate that can happen in the spirit that you can learn the things you need to know about certain things and god says now your message is clear your priority what keeps you fresh now is not just new revelations but the freshness of his presence that's why in old age you will still be fat and flourishing because you are planted are we together when you listen to papa deboe or you listen to benny hill and they talk the truth is that most of what they say will not necessarily be new to you but why do you receive it it comes with a freshness that 45 years of me has not eroded are you getting what i'm saying now yes god sees my heart i detest a ministry where only the man of god or the man of god and a few people they are the ones who are prayer warriors. They are the ones who are loving God. They are the ones who are conforming into his character. And then there is a, there are the masses of followers, as we call them, broke, weak, don't know God. And for many years, they remain loyal to that anointing. It's not God's way of doing things. Three years was enough for Jesus to build certain people. And after that, like the foxes of Samson, he released them. He said, guys, I know you want me to stay, but it is expedient that I go. Because it's time for you to be on the stage too. And did they succeed? They turned the world upside down. I look at a few people who God is helping. God is helping all of us. But I look at us and our spiritual results. I look at our financial results. I look at our results of influence and all and i'm telling you my heart is gladdened i know i remain committed to helping you become something that you may not understand now or appreciate but at the end of your life i still say it again you will stand back and watch yourself and say god so this is where you are going to take me to hallelujah pray in one minute say lord where i have not been attentive to you take away my pride take away that pride give me the grace my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from out of your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart it says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh of God within me rise let that entrepreneur within me rise let that Deborah let that Milka let that Hannah Rachel within me rise this is why I am here let that man of kingdom influence within me rise this 
for your glory it is for your kingdom an heir as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed lord i will listen hallelujah tonight i'm going to teach us briefly just very briefly just to prepare the ground for the seven days by the way please i don't want you to miss any of these days um my heart is already excited because of what god is going to be doing your life will so change it will surprise you we're going to be sharing mysteries and we're going to be praying one mystery per day that you handle and it just sets you on fire and we'll pray we're going to have a time of intense prayer praying in the spirit repositioning yourself times of encounters times of restoration of mantles of graces times of opening of new spiritual dimensions yes the prophetic is there but needs to be enlarged the apostolic is there but needs to be enlarged it's true that the healing ministry is there but it needs to be enlarged capacity please don't miss it this is not some activity of men no seven o'clock you are here no matter how long it takes to start just be here anywhere if you there is no space somewhere this is not a koinonia program this is a visitation that god is bringing to the land it will be a time of strange miracles few hours but the impact will linger upon your spirit make sure you fast please fast let the little children fast give them a little time they may not be able to fast six to six but except you are pregnant or under medical supervision then that that's all right but even at that doesn't mean you just eat anything anyhow are we together let your spirit be alive please off off useless movies films just suspend it for a while i beg you they don't have to be wrong all these social media distractions minimize it focus on god focus on god let what will play from your phone and your screens be worship give god one week and let him expand you you can't put new wine in an old wine skin so let god replace the wine skin so that it can take something heavier for the seasons that are coming hallelujah the protocol department will make arrangement will try to see how the buses will be available at least to bring in people and will try to finish on time but it's going to be seven days of fire in this place seven days of the strange move of the spirit epochal revelations of the truth of god's word that if and when you handle them will turn your life around hallelujah don't come alone invite someone Years ago, when I went for an Arbonke crusade, there was no seat. I stood there for six hours. Six solid hours. Because I was hungry. When you are hungry, you don't even see the color of the cloth of your neighbor. Your eyes are fixed. He said, if your eye be single, your heart will be full of light. Don't just come to hear, come to see. You can argue with what you hear, but you cannot argue with what you see. I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say. The Lord is saying, but my seeing. It is what you see that you get, not just what you hear. But a strong body in my heart this night, just a few minutes, let's talk about it. The spirit of wisdom your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise your 
sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will forever sing your praise. James chapter 1, verse 5. Forever sing your praise. And I will forever sing your praise. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, so the Bible tells us it is possible that a man can lack wisdom. It does not stop him from being a human being. It is possible to live without the wisdom of God at work in you. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom, the question here before we read on is how do you know you lack wisdom? Because you only ask when you don't have it. But how do I know? that I do not have wisdom because remember the Bible says every man is right in his own eyes so based on what parameter what parameter do I use to arrive at the conclusion that I am bankrupt of wisdom there is nobody I know on earth with the exception of few people who will admit that they are not wise is that true you try telling somebody who considers himself a gentleman and say i don't think you are exactly wise and you think the person will laugh at you and say wow i'm just learning that no you're going to have a big problem the person is not wise me am i a madman do i look like one but the bible says if any of you realizes that he lacks wisdom so the first assignment is not to ask the first assignment is to find out how do you know that the wisdom of God, that the spirit of wisdom is working in your life? Are we together now? There must be a system in the kingdom that God has provided to help men understand. So I can come to the conclusion because you see, as human beings, it is very difficult for us to admit that certain things are not working in our lives. Especially for believers. We are people of faith. And sometimes we can exaggerate it and admitting the deficiency of certain qualities in our lives. It's not natural for men to admit. Are we together now? Yes. When you tell someone he can't cook, say, no, 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 I can cook. What are you? I mean, this is it. You are evidently seeing that this meal is not servable. And the person is saying, I can cook. Because in his eyes, this is a wonderful meal. Are we together? You are seeing a gentleman who is not looking smart. And you are saying, no, no, no. You are not dressing smart. Say, no, no, no. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm very, very okay. So it is difficult. I'm explaining to you this, this, if any man lack wisdom, it's a very deep process to arrive at a point. Let me tell you, realizing whatever makes you come to a point where you know you do not have wisdom has to be the spirit of God. The arrogance of men does not allow for that level of admission. We can secretly desire to be wiser. We can secretly admire individuals who the spirit of wisdom is evidently working in. But to outspokenly admit, no. It's very uncomfortable. Are we together? But the Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask who let him ask of god that giveth unto how many men so the manifestation of the wisdom of god in the life of a believer is not privy to certain intelligent people it's not privy to apostles and prophets no the giving of this operation of the spirit is given to all men he says he does so liberally and then an upbraided not and it shall be given that means if i look at your life and i do not see wisdom 
I am safe to conclude at certain things. Number one, that you have not received. And you receive not because you have not asked. And you ask not because you have not seen the deficiency in your life. Are you seeing that now? That means if you look at my life and your life, and I am bankrupt of the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of men that comes to naught, the wisdom of God, if it is not in my life, the Bible says if I ask, it should be given. So if it is not in my life and God is benevolent, it means that I have not genuinely asked. And I have not asked because I have not seen the need. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. That means something about my understanding. I have indoctrinated myself into believing that I have sufficient wisdom. Let me tell you the formula that the Bible designed for men to know whether there is wisdom in their lives or not. Wisdom is very vocal. The Bible says wisdom is justified by her children. Wisdom is justified by her children. There are fruits in your life and my life that validates the presence of wisdom. There has to be fruits in your life and my life. There are things I cannot as a human being be sure of whether you have them or not. I leave that to God. Wisdom is not part of those. Because if the wisdom of God is functioning in the life of an individual, it is justified by the results children there talks of the results the proceedings that come from a life that is under the influence of wisdom so how do you know tonight whether or not the wisdom of god and more so the spirit of wisdom is at work very simple look at your results look at your life unbiasedly look at your life unashamedly and then you can come to the conclusion that mm -mm. the repetition of pain the repetition of failure listen carefully the repetition of struggle the repetition of hardship the repetition of the absence of the power the grace the favor of God in your life is a testament that the spirit of wisdom may not be at work in you The Spirit of God is at work in you. But that dimension of wisdom may not be at work in you. Are you blessed? Lack of the wisdom of God is what is responsible for the anxiety of men. You know what it means to be anxious? Worrisome. The fear that plagues people, you will always fear until you know what to do. And he himself knew what he ought to do. The Bible took out time to talk about anxiety. Philippians chapter 4. And when you read from verse 6 to 7. It says be anxious for nothing. Please give it to us. Let's, let's look at it before we, we talk some more about wisdom. It says be. The word careful there does not just mean be careless. It means be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer, we see prayer again. You leave that, we're going to touch that later. But it says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. There is an information that can take away anxiety. Anxiety, let me tell you something. It's not proof that Satan is around you is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life it's an uncomfortable truth we must admit our world is full of people dying of anxiety where will this come from where will i mean what? no no the pain and fear jesus took half of a whole chapter to talk about worry spoke about the birds of the air that break a spiritual law that is responsible for abundance it says yet your father yet not solomon arrayed in all of his splendor and apparel is like one of these anxiety is proof 
that the spirit of wisdom is not at work anxiety stems from uncertainty there is a level of uncertainty that is around our lives financially speaking spiritually speaking so you are about to um, do certain things embark on your life's journey and then because of the gaps of uncertainty you find out that there is worry and anxiety unbelief comes in fear comes in because of fear you become self-centered because you are aware that something about you will fail so you become possessive self-centered angry and all these other elements come in I found a very interesting scripture we're going to read it and then I'll define for you what wisdom is Psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 Psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 are we there read it please one to read ah uh ah -uh. one to read thou through their thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever before me next verse i have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation the last verse i understand more than the ancient stop stop don't rush it i understand more than my enemies you made me wiser than my enemies you made me wiser than my teachers and you made me wiser than the ancient and there is a key we're coming there are we together it says thou by thy commandments by thy laws ah, you have made me wiser wiser than my enemies so i can rise wiser than my teachers wiser than the ancients because i have kept your secret psalms 104 verse 24 psalm 104 verse 24 oh lord how manifold are thy works everybody say results i want you to read it just the first line but change works with results ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy results how did the results come about in wisdom thou hast made them all lord i look at your life and is full of mighty works results and the psalmist was careful to let us know that they did not just happen because you are god it is by engaging wisdom wisdom that these possibilities have been made manifest and the earth is full of your riches which is one of the results that you have produced in wisdom there is a relationship between results and wisdom there is a relationship between riches and wisdom how manifold how multifaceted how awe-inspiring are your works what is wisdom i put a definition here wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately wisdom is possessing scriptural dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kete kato. Kete branda kata bako tosko to pray kete kete kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.